for destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout aloud. Amen. Somebody. Now amen is not loud. Shout amen. Somebody. Amen. All right. You may be seated. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad to have you in the house of God tonight. Are you ready for the word of God? Glory be to God forevermore. Bro, Philip seems to receive new Bibles every Sunday. What is the Lord doing today? Amen. <laughs> Anyway, let's go. I'm teaching on something very important as we have begun uh, last week on thriving singles. And I'm so happy that my wife was able to do a very good job. How many of us were blessed last week? Come on. Celebrate Jesus if you were blessed last week. Let me... Oh, great. She was able to do a very good job on the theme and she emphasized on very important you know, aspect and also around me talk, talking about the need for mentorship. And she said that your mentor must be available, your mentor must be analytical. And then she gave the third point. So it's very important to understand that when it comes to singleness, uh, you have to understand that it's an opportunity for you to prepare for destiny. Your time, child of God, being a single is an opportunity to prepare for what, my friends? For destiny. Look at me, my friends, and say with me, singleness is an opportunity if you're single, say it to her. The, an angel may be passing. <laughs> Singleness is an opportunity to prepare for destiny. Yes, it's an opportunity. So we check scriptures. What I want to do tonight is, is quite different. I want to bring a dimension of singleness that must be understood and applied if you would have maximum results in your life, in your marriage, in your career, in your business, in your ministry, and in every other area. Are you ready now? This principle I'm going to teach you tonight is going to cover every aspect of the human life and of the Christian life. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine. First Corinthians chapter nine, and we're going to read verse twenty-seven together. First Corinthians chapter nine. We we'll read verse twenty-seven together. First Corinthians nine, verse twenty-seven. If you're there, we we'll read together. One, two, go. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it. To do what it should otherwise i fear that after preaching to others i myself 
might be disqualified. And, and what I want you to understand first this evening is the aspect of self-discipline. Before you can enter into the married institution, you have to understand the place of self-discipline. Self-discipline is very essential for every Christian single. Because when you get married, you're going to discover that if you were not disciplined as a single, it becomes very difficult to be disciplined as a married person. Remember, Jesus was teaching in the Gospels and then he said, if the blind lead the blind, they will end up where? In the ditch. That means that if you do not discipline yourself, it will be difficult for you to also help another mate that you meet when you get married. Your marriage will most likely be an amplification of your strengths and of your weaknesses. Your marriage is likely going to be an amplification, all right, or a multiplication. Do you understand what I'm saying? Of your what? Your strengths or your weaknesses. There are marriages that bring out the best in you, and there are marriages that bring out the worst in you. Can I pray for you that the second one will not happen to you? Yeah. Somebody did not say amen. I'm looking at everybody today. I said the second one will not happen to you. Yeah. There are marriages that bring out the best in you, meaning that when you enter into such kind of marriages, you are in a garden. You are like a plant that is being cultivated, nurtured for greatness, such that you don't only increase, you are fat, you are flourishing, and you are able to also add value, you know, in your own sphere of engagement. But there are marriages that look like um, like a parasite. That when you enter such marriages, you begin to dry. Have you seen couples who, when the lady was single, she was flourishing, she was awesome. When she got married, it's as though a lesser version of her has become the other of the day. Have you seen something like that before? It is as though something died within her when she got married. Why? Because if you do not understand the place of self-discipline, as I'm about to expose to you, you will notice that people will get married, although they will get married inside church, the enemy will still take charge of their lives. Now, the first person you lead, the first person you lead is yourself. The first person you must learn to lead is yourself. Not another person. Yourself. It's yourself. Paul said, I must discipline myself. We know that, yes, Paul did not marry, but other disciples got married. And Paul was saying that for the sake of destiny, for the sake of where I am going, there is discipline that must be engaged. And that's what we want to look at. Because sometimes when you hear teachings about marriage or you hear teachings about courtship and singleness, most times you don't hear the area of self-discipline. And without discipline, even revelation will lead to frustration. Say with me, without discipline. And without discipline. And without discipline, revelation will lead to frustration. So it is possible to actually know that the Lord wants you to marry Sister Annabelle. And the wedding bells may truly be ringing loud for everyone to hear. But without discipline, that which the Lord shows you can now become the reason why you are frustrated. Because it's going to look as if God lied to you. But God does not lie. I might be asking you already. I'll be quick tonight, but I need you to follow me. Let's consider the areas of self-discipline. What are the areas that we need to be disciplined? What are the areas of our lives that we need to engage self-discipline? Number one. Your spiritual life. Your spiritual life. Your spiritual life. There are many people who do not know that the quality of their marriages oftentimes is a product of the quality of their work with God. Child of God, no. If your work with God is not good, if your work with God is not consistent, if your work with God is not healthy, if your, God, if your work with God is not solid, your marriage is going to be the expression of your work with God. What you have with God in secret or do not have with God in secret will be made manifest in the marriage institution. That means that you, listen, do you know that in the plant kingdom, a tree is first a seed. Is that correct? Do you know that a seed can never fulfill its potential beyond what that tree, that seed itself can carry. A, a seed can never produce beyond its capacity. Is that true? For example, if you plant um, a, a, a coconut seed, there's a way they plant the coconut now. 
Do you know that no matter how many years that coconut exists, it will never get taller than MTN mast? The real MTN mast, not the coconut, the real ones. You know what? The, the, the coconut was not designed to be taller than the mast. It has talking about corn, maize. I think that one is short. Some of them are about our height and then their, their life is over. The maize can never be as tall as an aerobic tree. Why? It is not in the potential. Are you following me? Where you build capacity for destiny is in your work with God. So when we are talking about spiritual growth, we are talking about the knowledge of the word of God, taking God seriously. It's not just so that you can be an assistant pastor or so that you can go and start a branch. It's for your own good. Look at your neighbor and say, it's for your own good. Yeah, smile to the person and say, it's for your own good. Let me give you a few scriptures. Second Peter, Second Peter, Second Peter. I'll be quick tonight, but I need you to get it. Second Peter, look at chapter 3. Second Peter, chapter 3. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. Second Peter, chapter 3, and verse 18. Rather, I'd like us to read it together. I appreciate you carry, especially that one together. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. Let's go, my friends. Want to read. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we are talking about disciplining yourself in your spiritual life. Is that true? Meaning that you are committed to spiritual growth. You are a student of the Word of God. Now, here he says there are aspects of growth. And we're not going to all of it elaborately because I've talked to some of these things. He says grow in grace. Somebody say grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Savior, Jesus Christ. That means that a believer receives grace at salvation, but can grow in grace by applying himself to the word of God. Listen, everything given to you in the kingdom can grow. Are you here? It can grow. The grace of God can be multiplied. He says, grace be multiplied unto you. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. Second Peter 1 3. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called you into glory and virtue. So that a pastor joined you in wedding is not enough. If you do not have a work with God, it's going to look as if the pastor was an agent of Satan to match together somebody that Satan planned for you, whereas it's not Satan that planned. In fact, if you are not careful, you will make a choice out of the will of God because you do not have a work with God. Marital decisions today are made by, by crews, by skits, by the things people see online, by emotions. What I like, oh, what I, oh, look, oh, I, I think I like, oh, I think I love, is like two of you saw some skits that confirms my message today. Hmm. Listen, if you are not careful and you are not rooted, if you are not rooted, it's easy to be swept away by the trends. I hope you know about maybe some 10 months ago, one of the things that was raining was challenge. Challenge is beginning to reduce. Do you know some 10 months ago, last year, huh? challenge. Then there was bomb bomb challenge. Someone said bomb bomb challenge. There was bomb bomb challenge. No, we saw it. We have you didn't see. There was bomb bomb challenge. Even mothers, wives of elderly men, everybody, bomb bomb challenge. They sweat, they all kinds of challenges. And then what people are doing is showcasing their body parts because many ladies think that their value is in their physique, not in their work with God. And Paul made it clear. Peter was writing. He said, "Listen, let your, your beauty, your adornment, not just be in the outward stuff. Because uh, when they married you at eighteen, at twenty-one, at twenty-four, at twenty-six, you are fresh, you are smooth. I mean, you, you are as though you, you came down from heaven. But after fifty years, uh, wrinkles will begin to set in. Is that true? Eh? After giving birth, maybe four to five times, five children. No matter how much you try to package yourself, age is going to tell on your body." Now, if a man is not developed and rooted in the word of God to look for what is right in a woman, he is going to decide based on physique and miss destiny. Yes. Are you okay yes. Are you catching something here? So it is very possible that you have not learned to connect your work with God to the quality of decisions you make and then to the quality of the marriage and the home that you will have. But I'm telling you tonight that it is very important to prioritize your work with God. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. We're talking about self-discipline in the area of spiritual growth. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. <clears throat> Are you there? 
as new born babes. Huh? Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. I love the word of God. Do you love the word of God? As newborn babes. But listen, when you step into the kingdom, you step into the kingdom not as an adult but as a baby. How do we know? In John 3, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and then he said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. And Nicodemus was saying, Okay, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> Do I need to go back to my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, it's not that born again. A man that is born of a woman must also be born of God. Because if you are born of a woman and not born of God, when you die, you will perish in the lake of fire. But when you are born of a woman and then you are born of God, you are born as a newborn child. And one of the things you know about babies is that babies don't have time for argument. Once they are hungry, they cry. Babies don't say, mommy, mommy, can you consider trying to see what you can do about the hunger that is beginning to ravage my intestine? That's not what they do. Baby just opens my mouth and says, Alpha, what's going on here? Hello! And then everything. It's a big deal. He says, when you enter the kingdom of God, you should sustain that appetite that wants to learn the word of God voraciously. And Having that appetite at salvation must not end there. You must cultivate that appetite because it can go down. It can diminish. Your hunger for God can increase and then it can diminish. Child of God, let me ask you a question. Has it ever happened to you before that your hunger for God increased? Huh? Eh? That you knew God in this season. Eh? If Jesus comes now, we will go to heaven together. It is not when you won't go to heaven at the other time. But there are times when maybe activities, physical exertion, the worries of life, the stress and the bodies will make you begin to think about many things that if care is not taking you, start to argue. Must we even go to church every Sunday? Can we not just go once in a month? Since God is living inside me, Satan begins to help you to think thoughts that look intellectual, but they are intellectually, but they are spiritually wrong. But they, they sound intellectually high. Those are thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Are we together? And so, one of the ways to discipline yourself in your area of spiritual growth is to give yourself to a constant diet of the word. When you wake up in the morning or during your day, as you wake up, make time for the word of God. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever time you start with, but you must start somewhere. Everybody started somewhere. Um, sir, but I don't know memory verse, don't worry. Start by reading the word. From reading the word, you will graduate to learning to memorize verses of scripture. From learning to memorize verses of scripture, you are going to graduate to quoting the scriptures in prayer. From learning to quote the scripture in prayer, you also begin to remember the word as you go about your daily activities. From learning to Remember the word. Gradually you begin to apply the word. Joshua 1.8 This book, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then, now look at this. Some of you, how many of you want to prosper? Uh-huh. If you are looking to prosper in any area of your life, because I know that when you mention prosperity, what people quickly think about is money. Is that true? As I said, prosper, one person just thought of dollars. I said, God, this is my portion now. Listen, your prosperity, hear me, hear me, and write it down, tweet it later. Your prosperity is at the mercy of your transformation. Your prosperity is at the mercy of your transformation. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Be not conformed to this word, but be transformed. Do you see that? By the renewing of your mind. That means that when we got born again, our minds re retained the baggages of falsehood and lies and informations and speculations that were unfounded or that we got from neighbors, from parents, from friends, from families, from the news, from social media, I mean, from classmates, from teachers, from mentors. We got all kinds of strange things from the world. And when you get born again, your mind is not formatted. Your mind is only now made open to begin to receive the cultivating ministry of the word of God. Are you still with me? The quality of your of your spiritual life 
is dependent upon your disciplining yourself to sit with the Bible. Nobody finds it very nice to read the Bible every day. After a while, it becomes an habit. And one of the wisdom of God for man is the power of habit. Do you know that habit can be a gift? It can be a blessing. There are people that have given themselves so much to prayer that after arriving in their lives, prayer becomes a habit. If you have to say amen. amen. Prayer becomes what? Amen. Becomes a habit. Such that they just they don't know when they, when they are not talking sports. Something does like how to have a market a level higher. And, and the rest of you drop a prayer point. Sometimes they are just walking on the road, not to show off. They just, just say, oh, Lord, I thank you. So it's just worship just rises from their inside. Why? Anything, listen, anything you repeatedly do will soon become a habit in your life. So if you are finding it difficult to study the word of God as a single, after a while, when you get married, it would have become an habit. You will not be able to do family devotion if you are not used to personal devotion. I'm saying this because I understand what it is as a married man. If not that my wife and I had a walk with God before we got married, Huh? Now that we are married, we will not do devotion. And you will not know whether we do devotion or not. But your commitment to it, 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 becomes, it becomes a habit such that the day you don't do it, the second day, the third day, you will not, after a while, you just feel as if you are dying. You know why? It has become an habit. You have, you have become dependent on it. And it's a good habit. Amen? That means that you can use habit as the power yeah, to work for you. Because if I do the right things repeatedly, then it works for me. But if I do the wrong things repeatedly, it works against me. I will learn it tonight. So regular devotion to the word of God and to prayer. In Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6 and verse 4. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6 and verse 4. You know that there was a little rancor because of the distribution of meals and welfare package. To the widows and some of them, and they felt some felt deprived, and they began to do a little abuta continua. And the apostles had to rise and say, Listen, we need to get busy. And in Acts chapter 6, verse 4, they said, We, the apostles, can spend our time in prayer and in the teaching of the word of God. We must give ourselves to prayer. In First Thessalonians chapter 5. Paul writing to the brethren of Thessalonica, he said, Pray not cease. Give yourself to prayer. Child of God, prayer will not kill you, it will kill your flesh. God is with me today, and I'm teaching you, I'm blessed. Am I blessing? What am I even asking? I'm blessing you. I'm blessing you. Like what? Prayer does not kill you, it kills your flesh, it helps to tame the flesh. Jesus says, watch and pray so that you will not enter into temptation. Watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Meaning if you are not watching and pray, your tendency to fall into temptation increases. Prayer helps to sharpen your spiritual discernment as a single. Because not all that is rosy is rose. Are you here? Uh, not all that glitters is gold. Are you here? Not, that, uh, not all that sparkles is really sparkling. Are you here? Not all that, mm, 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 mm. not all that looks peaceful is actually peaceful. Are you here? Some people can be gentle on the outside. If you don't have a walk with God, you will not be able to discern their motives. And you'll be carried away. And you will spend the rest of 78 years of your life marrying somebody that was your enemy. May you not marry your enemy. Amen. And may they not marry you too as an enemy. Another way to grow your spiritual life very quickly is you have given yourself to the word, you have given yourself to prayer. Give, hear me now, this is it. Give yourself to constant church attendance. The Bible says, They that be planted in the house of our God shall flourish in the court of our God. Give yourself to constant church attendance. Don't be that Christian that does not come on Sunday and does not come on weekly days. And when we have evangelism, you are not around. And then you, you follow online once in a while. No. Come on Sunday. Come on Tuesday. If you have special meeting, come. Why? In attending the gathering of the brethren, you are allowing yourself to receive the sanctifying work 
of the complete grace of God upon the house. There are some things that you can achieve on your own as a Christian. But there are many other things you cannot achieve on your own except as a corporate body. Are we together? The Bible says, oh, how beautiful, how sweet, how good and pleasant it is that brethren dwell together in unity. For it is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron to his beard and down to his skirts. Glory be to God forever. So let's dwell together. Let's gather together. Let's spend time together. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of God. Hallelujah. Let's glad. Be happy. Be happy. I'm tempted, but I will not talk again since I've already addressed it. Be happy. Be, listen, be glad when they say, let's go to church. Be happy. Be happy about it. Be glad. Every time it's service day, yeah, my, my happiness is to increase. And that's our service. See, one of the ways to catch me, if you want to catch me, yeah, if you want to catch me, after any service, make sure you follow me to our house. If you follow me to our house, after any service, ah, uh, you'll be blessed. Amen. You know what? Every service day gives me more joy. You know what? Seeing your faces, spending time together, just, my, just looking at you gives me joy. Maybe because I'm the pastor, I don't know, but I think that's how every Christian should be. We should be happy to fellowship together. I don't know if you understand it. Sometimes, do you know your presence sometimes encourages me, and my presence sometimes encourages you? Do you know that it is possible to be with somebody you, you truly love and you do not say anything? Just being there can encourage them. So it's not every time I must tell you, so what you do? Sometimes I just, I just smile and say, God bless. God bless you should be enough. But in the name of Jesus, <laughs> amen. Yeah. All right. Are you getting blessed? Are you learning something now? Another thing is read spiritual books. You want to grow spiritual. Now is the time to read spiritual books. Now is the time to buy Christian book and read it. Say amen. There is a spirit that is at work in the last days against Christian youths. Not all of us, but some. And they, so, some have some succumbed to that spirit. It's the spirit of Akagon. The name of that spirit is Akagonia. It's an academic spirit. A spirit that makes you stingy to your own spirit. The most important thing in your life is your work with God. And that's where he tells you, no, save money to buy clothes, save money to buy shoes, save money to buy food, save money to go to the cinema, save money to buy data, to watch movie, save money to enjoy yourself, but don't save money to feed your inner man. Keep dying in your inside, but with doing fat and flourishing on the outside. It's only a matter of time. When we ask you, what books are you reading? Sir, you will not be reading. I, I don't like reading. It's not my gift. Reading is not a gift. It's a practice. Nobody was born to like reading. Uh -huh. Are you there? Even Jesus was not born to like reading. Jesus practiced reading by going to the temple and he was are, are you here? Listening to what the rabbis were teaching, asking them questions. There was feedback. And then after a while, later, Jesus in his ministry, after 13 years of waiting, would say things like, have you not read? And have you not heard? Have you not read? Meaning that Jesus read. If Jesus read, the old wise God, who are you not to read? What do you know that you will not read? Read Christian books. Not just my books. Of course, read my books. Amen? If I'm your pastor, the first book you should read. If you go to every books, I just want to take other books. I will not smile. If you read your pastor's books, why? Your pastor knows you more than those ones you are reading. Your pastor was giving for you. Hey, are you there? If I write 25 books, you should read all the 25. If you can, if you can. Yes! You know what? Your pastor was given for you. He was given to you. He was raised for you. Many of the things he writes, it's impossible for them not to bless you because his ministry is sent to you. But if you do not recognize that your pastor's ministry is sent to you, anything he labors to give you will not be appreciated because until you deserve value, you cannot appreciate it. I'm releasing some three books in some weeks now. Yes, I'm releasing some three books. <laughs> They'll bless you. There is one. Be smart. Be sure. Be seen. Uh, undergraduate or graduate, it will change your life. Are you? God sent me to you. And then read other Christian. Ask people that really read good books to tell you what, what are the books you can recommend for me. Or go to Christian you know, booksellers and ask, Ma or Sir, can you recommend good books? And they will tell you, okay, this is good book. This is then check and, and read it. There are Christian books that I start mentioning now. I know some of us may not know some of them. But there should be some you know and you have read. When me, I was growing up as a Christian, I used to buy books for evangelism purposes. I would buy Ghana Must Go books and I would be distributing inside boxes 
free. And there were still people that would not collect. I said, no. I guess what? Some of you even have pastors that have books. You have people that have books around you. You cannot borrow and you will not buy. And if they even give you a series, this one, 16 months will pass. You have not scratched the first page. Why? Pastor, I'm busy in my school. I see only in elementary school. Imagine if we did not go to school, you would only school to life for us. You say, Ugo, she, Ugo. The Lord give you understand. Read books. Paul read books. The apostles read. That's why sometimes we will see Paul, he will quote their poems. He will tell you, Plato said this, Socrates said this, Aristotle said this. Because some of them lived before Christ and they read those guys. To understand what was happening in their times and then interpreting it in the light of the word of God. Are we blessed? So, number one, spiritual discipline is what your spiritual meaning. Listen, make time for spiritual growth. Make time out of 24 hours, then you should make time. Yes, make time for it. You can make time. Tell yourself, I can make time for spiritual growth because, Buddha, you know, uh, my elder sister, my older sister, she had a wedding anniversary, I think yesterday or two days ago. So I posted that picture of her and her husband's picture and the baby. And, and some people were chatting me, they say, we know this Inspector Polako. In Muramuzi, we know Inspector Polako. You see, as I said, that that one is my in-law. And someone said, hey, okay, it's your in-law. Ah, okay, okay. It's, it's like our pastor goes over. He said, you, many people know who are, but them, do you, they know the names of the cast, the, the, the people that acted. But then, what are the names of the 12 disciples? Say, so, uh, I think, uh, Paul is part of the 12. He said, is Paul part of the 12? He said, no, uh, is it not Paul no, is it not Saul that became Paul? Saul did not become Paul. Saul is Paul. Paul is Saul. It's like saying Larry and not Larry. What? You see, Larry, are you here? He said, oh my dear, Saul. What is this? He said, okay, not for today. Are you here? Ah, are you here? God sent me. God sent me. In the name of Jesus. I think I'll need an anchor. The fire is burning today. Find me an anchor. I don't even have one in my bag. Look for it. Number two, are you, are you learning now? So invest in your spiritual growth. Don't tell me you don't have time, but you have downloaded some of you. You are customers of Net Niger. If they mention 15 names of you are, you are there. And some of you are so skillful that you are in some groups on Telegram. Eh, as you need to do. You are in some groups on Telegram that load you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over of movies. So you have more movies than spiritual growth projects. You don't have any plan. You just what is your plan to be say, ah, that movie. I'm in episode six. I want to finish episode. Uh, it's just 28 episodes. I'll just play watch it. Chacha, that's 30 minutes. Chacha. If you invested that 30, 30 minutes in prayer every day, you will not be like this. Are you still with me? Is it wrong to watch movies? No, watch some movies, make time. But you, if you do not make time for what matters the most, later when you now want to make that time, you will find out that time is almost going up. Because time can never be restored, actually. You are, everybody has 24 hours. Nobody on earth will have 25 hours. So we make time for what is most important to us. Number two. Number two, and that, I'm already talking about it. Number two area of self-discipline. Number two area of discipline is with time. Time. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. I know that Paul in the book of Ephesians also talks about time. And then he says, redeeming the time for the days are what evil. But I want you to see something in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, let's go there. Are we getting blessed? My teaching today will be brief, but it will bless you. Ecclesiastes, look at chapter 9 and verse 10. We can all read it together. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Are we there? All right. Let's read together. One, two, go. Whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Now, listen. Time is perishable. Yet, it is indispensable. Time is perishable. Yet, it is indispensable. 
And here the right of Ecclesiastes is saying, listen, whatever you do, you better do it well. There is no time because everybody one day will go to the grave. Whether you like it or not, you are growing older by the minute. Your age may not change today, but it will change in 12 calendar months. Have you? As far as I know, biology teaches us that you are actually growing every moment. For example, we have a baby that the grace of God. Because we live with the baby, we may not easily observe growth. We just know the baby is because of everything. But people that saw the baby the week she was born, when they look at her after three months, they say, eh! This, and we are like, ah, yes, now she, ah, she's, yeah, she's there. Uh -uh. That's how time is. Time waits for no man. But a man must know how to manage himself to maximize time. Some of you, as it happened to you before, you felt you, you wish you had extra 10 hours in the day. Every time that happens to you is a sign that you are already having misplaced priorities. Because you are not doing the most important things first. That's why you are needing more hours. God in his wisdom knows that 24 hours is good enough. Are we learning? Bill Gates has 24 hours. Men of God have 24 hours. Even people have 24 hours. Everybody has the gift of 24 hours. But what you do with your 24 hours is going to determine the quality of life that you live as a single and as a married person. Can I hear an amen? amen. That's why, you know, economists will tell you of the principle called the Pareto principle. The Pareto principle. You said the Pareto. Have you heard of the Pareto principle? The 80-20 rule, the 80-20 principle. Now, the Pareto, the Pareto, write this down, Anna, write this down, everybody write this down, pay attention, write it down. The Pareto principle states that 20%, 20%, the Pareto, P-A-R-E-T-O, the Pareto principle states that 20% of your actions account for 80% of your results. I say that again, think about it. 20% of your actions account for 80% of your results. Wow. What does that mean? You need to fine tune your actions such that you have maximum output. Because if it is only 20% that is producing the 80%, what we want to do is not just doing more, but doing the right things more. Are we catching something? So, what does that tell you when it comes to time management as, as a Christian, as a child of God? Value time. Maximize time. Respect time. People, listen, the reason why people don't respect your time is because you too don't respect your own time. There are friends that can say, eh, eh, and they will start engaging and be gossip for 11 hours for two minutes. And then you go back home. Somebody says, hey, which day? And then somebody else, in that 11 hours, he has prayed, slept, woke up, done chores, read books, read their school book, read spiritual books, and then maybe just seen the movie. Both of you will never have the same result. Is that true? Assess the value of what you do in every 24 hours. Let me ask you a question. What did you do yesterday? Someone said, I cannot remember what I did yesterday, but I thank you for yesterday. And not in law, who will be? A near to law, who call a lot to law, okay, or to Latin. No, your 24 hours. Some of you may be living under your parents to understand that you may not have control of all your time. But listen, if you dignify your time, after a while, your parents will notice and they will say, No, 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 that's a prayer time. I there are things like that. Oh, that's a prayer time. Now she's praying. Okay, okay yeah, when you do it, oh, that's a reading time. But you, there's no reading time, there's no prayer time, there's no, no time for anything. The Lord give you understanding. Your actions reveal your priorities. And your priorities reveal your values. Meaning what you do tells us what you truly prioritize in your life. And what you prioritize in your life speaks a lot about you. Look at Jesus. Waking up a great while before the Mark 135. 
went to a solitary place and there he prayed. And then he will go minister to people, make time to rest, discuss with the disciples, travel to the other side again, rest. And then you would notice from Jesus' life that he was a disciplined man. I wonder how Christians choose tongues but don't choose discipline. The Holy Spirit, according to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, all right, for God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And the word sound mind in other translations is the word self control. Not even sound mind to pass exam, even though it's good. Huh? Self discipline, self control, meaning you can restrain yourself. You can, listen, you can delay gratification. You can postpone some player so that you can produce high value results now in your business. Some of you are doing business. If you can think about your business 30 minutes every day for one month, you have a break. Why? Profit answers first to the mental child that your brain can produce. Profit is not just by activity. That's why, have you seen these aboki guys, these manners? Do you know some of them, the loads they carry and the things they push every day? If they were to be paying them the way they pay a bank manager, some of them would be the richest in the world. But you see, you sweat more with your hands when you do not sweat with your brain. That's why you must use your time productively to think. Think progress. Are you a career person? Think about it. Are you an undergraduate? You think about it. Are you prepared for example? Think you have to think. Christians that pray and don't think are like a hunter that has God but does not have bullet. One leg praying, the other place meditating and then taking action. Am I blessing you today? I'm asking you. I'm blessing you. I'm blessing you today, child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I even if you say that they said hallelujah. All right, let's make progress. Number three, because of time. Number three. Number three area that you must discipline yourself is in the area of money. Money. Look at your neighbor, smile, say money. Paul oh, said, being obedient children. Obedient children, smile at your neighbor and say money. <laughs> Luke chapter 16, verse 11, quickly. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Oh, glory to God. This is a very good teaching. All right, and it will bless you. It will bless you. Look at Luke chapter 16 now. Luke chapter 16. Let us read verse 11 together. Luke 16, 11. One to go. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? Listen. One of the most accurate gauge of your spiritual life, of your Christianity, is not the sonor sonorosity of your voice. It's not how you can ad lib and run reads and do falsetto and teach. It is actually now you spend more. Hey, I'm about to say, hey, this pastor, every Sunday. <laughs> How you spend money tells us a lot about you. What do you mean by that? If you are generous, huh? if we look at your account in one month, we can know if you are generous. We, we can know. There's nothing like in my mind. I've been giving a lot in my mind. Uh, the ones that you gave. Say, Pastor, you cannot believe as well. I've given you a kind in my mind. I've given you. <laughs> but that way it is. The direction of your spending reveals to us your priorities. A woman came to a meeting, like today's service now. I said, I give you your offering now. I should just stand and be looking. I said, bring the egg with the oil. I said, well, bring it to the front. And then I'm standing, I'm looking at, you know, some of you like to squeeze. They said, no, you know, today, everybody will do. All right. Then Jesus huh, now stands like this at the offering basket. Everybody figure out, everybody testifies. You pass it to me. I don't know to say, where you put it? Then it's like this. Maybe I should even try it today. So every time, say, look, I will just stand like this. Somebody say, ah, pastor, ah, pastor, we now know that I don't use the plan of rain at all. 
The reason why some of you don't plan to give offering at all is not because you don't have, it's because even when you have, you don't remember offering. You don't think God deserves to receive anything from you. Are you here? Do you know that in your bank, in your bank, eh, for putting money with saving your money with them, they will still collect money from you. Do you know they collect 15 and stand it? That's five naira something. Do you know what they are raking from you every month? Some of you two times a day, and you are never going to be able to complain. They are receiving something of eternal family that will last you, last your home last. And then you just don't just say, take my life, no, take my life and let it be. If we, if, can you let him, if you cannot receive your pocket, if you cannot give your pocket, receive your life. Somebody that you cannot give your money, you want to give him your heart, it's a lie. Tell everyone it's a lie. If a church is broke and they don't have money, two things. Number one, maybe the members are not in a stage where they are very financially capable. Or number two, they do not understand how money works. Listen, if you are not rich toward God, but you are rich towards yourself, you are rich towards your desires, you are rich towards the things that you like, check it. You are not as strong spiritually as you ought to be. That widow gave a might, and we call it widow's might. And some of you would have done it before. Maybe you wanted to give somebody things, maybe on their birthday, maybe ceremony, anniversary, or your spiritual leaders. And the Bible says, let them be accounted for double honor. Those that lay over you in word and doctrine. Meaning, if you are giving, if you are giving somebody something, your pastor should take double. You should be grateful that you can give double. Why? Because that's what the Bible commands. Yet, you now give your pastor, you know what you will say, Pastor, this is my widow's might too. It is my man of God. This is my widow's might. And you know what we call widow's might? The tiniest portion of your leftovers. Say it's my widow's might too. Widow's might actually means having given it compared to what is left. Not saving much and then giving little. <laughs> That's why he received the uh, the might of that woman because maybe she does not have anything left. And those ones as much and just brought little. And sometimes when we are praying, we say, Lord, out of the little you have brought, which we have brought little to show you that you gave us little. There's nothing like that. He didn't give you little. He didn't give you little. Eternal life is in little. It's not me that came for you today, it's God that came for you. Amen. So money can increase or decrease. So as a single, one of the things you are learning is to be disciplined with money, such that you understand how money works. Read books on money. Listen, Christianity is not a stupid faith. It's a very sound, rational faith. Faith is not a leap in the dark. It's actually wisdom at work. Are we together? Christianity is not a blind faith. Money can increase or decrease. How many of you here are in business? Raise up your hand. How many of you are in business? Raise up your hand. How many of you have read at least 15 books on business? Raise up your hand. Mr. Mesa, are you raising up your hand? Okay. You see? Oh, you, you have read 15 books on business. Have you? <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I can't even count how many books I've read on business, but I know it's over 100. I know. There's no prayer about it. It's over 100. Some of you do not listen. Buy the truth and sell it not. That's what the Bible says. Your WhatsApp contacts are there because you don't understand business. They are just there. The only thing they do for you is to greet you on your birthday. They will watch your status from January to December. You have never made any money from them because you have not added any value to them. Some of you are too shy to let people know what you are selling. It's because you have not learned about business. If you are despising the days of small beginnings, how will God increase you? Are we together here? Yeah. Money can increase or decrease. Find out how it can increase. You already know how it can decrease. <laughs> Should I teach you how money decrease? You know that. Ah, you know now. One day you were too happy. You have 15,000. 15,000. You just counted, counted, counted six times. I said, let's go. Then you went to one boutique. And saw one shoe for 38,800. You bought that one. Then you saw one entry, say this he has like you just saw down there and let Amala. He has like Amala and then they go see. They now say, I've been desiring to eat full meat all my life. It's my time today. Hallelujah. Then you sat down with it and they teach you were Belgian and you were saying stories of your life and you were happy. And they are thanking God for you. And when you are now going home, you now find one ancient 15 there. You now beg the bike man that no, it's no more, it's not 70, it's 50. It's 50. Then you get back to you say, ah, 
Ah, God, my ah, God, you are so kind to me. But Monday morning comes, and you realize that it has decreased. That this one didn't decrease. It finished. That's what they call see finish. Money is not emotional. It is you that is emotional. If you waste money, it will not increase. Invest for expansion. Learn how to earn money. In fact, researchers have told us that the more you learn about finance and apply those principles, the more likely your wealth is going to increase. Poor people are not poor because they don't have money. They are first poor because they are mind. They don't have ideas. They are stupid. I don't mean stupid to abuse. Do you understand? Like, actually, stupid is a dictionary word. Do you understand that? Okay, means they don't have finance sense. And they are not willing to learn. Do you know, one of the most arrogant set of people in this world is poor people. You know, poor people don't like being taught. Poor people like to think they know, they, they, poor people can teach you about money that they don't have. <laughs> I will never be poor. Learn to save. Some of you have piggy vests. You've seen that app many times. They market everything. You will not use it. You know why? You are your own piggy vest. Your polo, your, your safe, that your polo, it has 25 euros. Because again, you just change your mind and change your mind. Say, so that's Sunday, it's Sunday day. I need cool. I just need you cool, just to rest. You know, it's been a busy week. God is so faithful. <laughs> you convince yourself that wasteful spending is taking care of yourself. It's not true. Are we learning? Delay, learn to delay gratification for later date. The days will come when you will enjoy, but not yet. We enjoy discipline for now. Amen. Learn to honor the Lord with what you have. Don't go to church and not plan to give an offering, except you don't have and you trek to that service. Don't go to church and not plan to give an offering. Why? Don't go to church and then for weeks you don't plan to give tithe. There's project to be done. You don't have any any plan. When they are calling the ministry account number, let's all this see to this uh, all this. Once they say offering time, you log off. You are no more in that service. Offering time should be blessing time, but offering time for me is nagging time. It's anger time. So, oh yeah, yeah, let them worry, let them worry. How many minutes should they take offering? Is the church about money now? Is the money we are now serving now? Are we now? <laughs> but because that you take, you didn't know you start putting it. So the love of money, first Timothy to persist and verse is the root of all evil. Why should you forget that fight and appear the virtue with money sorry? And he said, hey, you catch yourself quoting by saying, Wow, I know Bible. He said, Time that wants to quote Bible to make sure that through the quoting of Bible, you are exempted from the blessings of God. Are you ready? So first Timothy to persist verse 10 that I just quoted, avoid greed. Some of you, anytime you are about to receive first fruit, you are about to receive tithe, you are about to receive money, some videos will start popping up, orchestrated from the pit of hell against your finance. There's somebody who just say, the theory lies in Christianity. First fruit, tithe, and offerings. In the Old Testament, they brought their yams. Instead of bringing money, bring your yam for the house of God. And then you now say, hmm, that is true. And it's true. The way you are broke, they say the God of finance. Ah, uh -huh. it means you are a selfish Christian. You want to use God to enjoy yourself, but you do not want to give to God. Let your attitude change today, child of God. Plan for services. Plan. This is what I will give next Sunday. In fact, some of you plan your transportation fee huh? in the month. Okay, how many times do we come for service a week? Majorly, maybe just in a month. Twice in a week, I mean, most times. And then in a month, that's maybe eight times. Okay, if it is 500 naira times eight, that's 4,000, and I keep it somewhere. For what? Transportation. Not so, Sunday afternoon and after party, just say, hey! Pastor, I know the one thing about there's no transport there. The pastor in his kindness will say, ah, and people of God must come to the house of God. Pastor did not plan you with. But now, Pastor has to. Line because you don't have plan to get the money from anywhere anyway. Don't be like that. Be a responsible Christian. Look at your neighbor. I want to I must say, child of God. Be a responsible Christian. With money. With your time. Say and if you believe it. 
fourth area. Number four area where you should discipline yourself. Are you learning tonight? Yes, sir. Very good. Number four area, your health. Your health. Your health. Eight, eight. Uh -huh. Your health. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. Your health. We know that Paul said to Timothy that body makes exercise prominently to body less profitable unto all things, both in this life and in that which is to come. Uh, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, we see that the Bible makes it clear that our bodies at the time, Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Are you there? One, two, ready to Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who lives in you and was given to you by God, you do not belong to yourself. Yes. I want to ask you a question. Do you, what do they call those waste management guys now? Lawman. What do they call them? Lawman. Waste management. Imagine waste management did not come to your house for six weeks. And then the waste is now plenty. You now say, uh, well, I'm, Pastor, I, I want to inform you that when I'm coming to ECC on Sunday, and our waste, I, I want to bring it to the, to, to, to the house of God. We'll just drop it somewhere by the altar, you know, so that the fire on the altar can help us consume it. You know, you say, oh, that's foolishness. Uh, no, you, you know, I will not say anything. I'll just say, hey, oh, what, what do you mean by waste? Can you define, or can you send a picture of the waste? What are you talking about? It's either what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> may you not may you not send an evil message <laughs> now what am I trying to say because you know that this place has been consecrated separated for the use of God you take care of this place is that true but child of God your body hosts the Holy Spirit and as you go about your daily life you carry the Holy Ghost with you yet you have very unhealthy habits not you, all right? Maybe those online, but not you. Eh? Sometimes in three days, if there's no school, there's no lecture, there's no way you're going to, you may not brush. You just consider brushing, brush is not too necessary. Because once I eat morning food and I do not know how to bam, bam, I'll be okay. Then later at night again, all I need to do is to not close my mouth for too long. If I keep opening my mouth and be talking and be talking, and the, the mouth odor will disappear. Uh -huh. Child of God. Child of God. Look at your name and say, Child of God. Some ladies, even on a Sunday, if they are not, maybe they are not going to church for whatever reason. On a Sunday, and I'll eat me, they can say, Pastor, you never believe it. I'm not, 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 I'm Sake Amantole. The Lord is, is using me. And some can go three days. They say, I don't have any of those. It's the gift of God to me. You are preparing the girls. Imagine the Holy Ghost inside you. Eh? With the body of God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You know, some of these Holy Ghost will not live with you. Because if you like this, as you do, even you go to my just. Then he, you know, as as the as the presence of the Lord passed Moses, and you just saw a, a glimpse, just a glimpse of that wind can kill a mosquito. Bah, 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 bah. Child of God, that's why you go for evangelism. Hey, my brother, he said, I accept Christ. I accept quickly. I accept. Christ. Oh, you go for a program, and, and somebody's just laying us. I just say, I fall, I fall, I fall, Daddy, in the name of Jesus. The Lord is there. Are you are you blessed? Are you following? Your health. Develop healthy habits. One of the things I think you should learn to develop when it comes to your health. You see, I'm your pastor and I love you and I must tell you the truth. Please, brush your teeth. And then it doesn't start to reach out, but brush your teeth. Because the day you will meet your destiny ever. And you are talking and, and spirit is flying. And, and your teeth, they are saying meat. You know, yesterday that you forgot in your mouth, I used to have a mm, You see, they are hanging in a balance, like a pendulum. <laughs> okay, let me just let me just see. Yes, there. Let's go. Be hydrated. One of the things you learn to do is stay hydrated. There's what is called water therapy. Drink water well. Some of you are so gifted that in the name of economic management, 
in order to avoid mismanagement, you don't drink too much water. The most I said, no, in our family, we don't drink too much water. We are not, we don't drink too much water. Why do we need water for? The Bible says that uh, the scientists say we are 70 percent water. What do I need water to add to the water? Why water? <laughs> are we water works? Yeah. You are killing your liver, you are killing your body, right? Your intestine, you are killing. Listen, do you know that if you don't drink water well, you are stressing your digestive system? Do you know if you don't drink water well, you are already affecting your lungs gradually? That means you just be 81 and you just be, you just think you cannot say amen again. Some of you need to see some of you when you wake up in the morning, sit down. I know water is not expensive. Drink water. If you cannot, if, if pure water, I, I understand. If pure water is the challenge, boil water. If, if, if gas is the challenge, buy charcoal, 200 naira, 1000 naira. Huh? You need to boil all the water your ancestors would need. <laughs> I said, just boil water. Are you following me? Boil water in buckets, like three or four buckets. Close it and sometimes open it so that there is some air, right? So that it doesn't become green on that. Yeah? And then be drinking it. Thank, be thanking God, be drinking it. There's no need to drink my water. Drink. Why drink water that we give? It's called water poisoning. Are you here? Drink the right water. Take it, drink it. Then go. I know. Rather than speaking tongues, I don't speak in tongues. Don't waste tongues. Just boil it. If you boil it, don't waste tongues. Boil it. There are people that have died because they didn't drink water well. They are not hydrated. They died of exhaustion. Dehydration. Some of you, listen to me, some of you eat too much junk. You know when I was the president of campus, it happened that I had the privilege to mentor a few people. One lady told me that the reason she eats chocolate and some of this junk, now chocolate is good, there are some chocolate that is actually good, all right? But some of this junk food, a little indomie, a little kidney baby, all kinds of messy things, sweets and is because they say that if she eats it, she's going to be chubby and all her all her all her figure will show. So that's what she, that's what she's lip boring, not to figure. She's lip boring, lip trying her best. Saving money to buy those things. And after a while, her teeth begin began to become her teeth began to kick. Her teeth began to decay. You know, you know when you are alive and your teeth is decay in, in your presence, in your life, your lifetime. It's first that yellow, uh, that yellow thing, and then it starts becoming green, and then maybe it becomes burgundy after a time. All kinds of violet, and all. And then you open mouth for God and say, Brother, I don't know, is the Lord living? Is the Lord living? Is the Catalan The brother has gone. <laughs> Please. Don't eat junk food. Listen, the more you eat junk food, the more you are cutting short your lifespan. I'm telling you. Some of us, are coke addicts. You know one day I watched a documentary of how that you can pop coke inside toilet and use it to wash toilet and the toilet will be white as snow. I said, ah, can they move me? But eventually, some of us eventually, even this evening, some of you eventually find a way to just encourage yourself in the love for strength, little strength. Please don't be, don't be addicted to sugary things. Some of you cannot take Moringa. Some of you cannot cut Moringa. If you know how many things Moringa can do for your health, you, you, will, not, you will go and plant one. Just Moringa. I'm not even talking of the others. Moringa. You say, no, but it's so bitter, it's so bitter, it's so bitter. It's pretty, pretty, pretty. Can we add a little sugar to Moringa? No. No. Just put out water or eat or try to chew it. I know some of you cannot live like some of us live. Some of us are like John the Baptist. You can cook moringa and cook. <laughs> of course, you will not finish the soup too. By the time you eat two spoons, <laughs> you find that you eat rubbish. <laughs> but you can boil it and drink it, and it will wash your system. The money, listen, the money we spend in hospital for not paying attention to your health may cost you a fortune. Some people spend their lifetime getting money only to spend their life savings keeping themselves alive. I want us to be 18 years old. Of course, we'll not be here by that time. We'll have moved to bigger places. And guess what? We'll still be strong. I'll still be strong like this, but I'll still be strong. But, but I'll be teaching you the word of God. I'll be jumping up. I shout, Hallelujah! I'll be strong. Not again, 22. You're already No! Some of you may say, if you go for NYC, some of you, as you are, if you go for NYC, you will just die. That's why God has not allowed you. You will just die. 
Because you are not taking care of yourself. So when you get there, they strain you into your friends and say, I faint. What should you do? Be well hydrated, drink water, we're drinking it water. Live in a clean environment. Some of you are so good with mosquitoes that, I mean, they cannot do it. Now it's a male, male, now it's male. This is not a female, no feminist, this is no less no. Schoolless no. No, kill them. Some of you are so used to rats that you don't mind. Rats can just jump at some of you. Hey, this is now, this is now, this is now. Hey, all these rats, eh. Uh, no. Buy rats gone and keep and catch them, then punish them the way you like. Some rats, you just need them to be dying there. So you catch them and, and light fire on matches and, and be warning them and be warning them. Tell them next time, you are your ancestors. For 30 days, you just find that they don't come. Amen. Eat balanced diet. Uh-huh. Eat balanced diet. Hey, our country, our country is a life. Balanced diet is not as expensive as you think. Some of you have vegetables behind your house or good soil. Just plant ugu. Huh? Some of these vegetables there, they will grow. You already have carbohydrates. Get small protein here and there. Mix it. You are good. Listen, nobody will look at your stomach to say, ah, you had shawarma, you had hot dog. What matters is, are you strong for destiny? Listen, the Holy Ghost lives on your inside. If you don't take care of your health, you will die before your time. And when you get to the world, why did you come to it? I will not die before my time. It's not just a confession of what is rubbish. Some of you, the food is since four days ago. It's already having, if you pull it like this, there's gum. You just say, it's not true. Oh, it's still okay, it's still okay. No, it's not true. But if you leave it for two hours, you say, you are convincing yourself. <laughs> just handle everything to master Jesus. Eat. When you eat, eat lightly. Some of us eat very heavy. You say, I don't have, I don't play with my food, though. I eat heavy. What you what you have to eat in one day, in three means a day or twice in a day, because I don't know how three is square. Three square means I three square. Is three square? Who told you that it must be three times a day you should eat? You can eat one time a day, and it's good food that you are good, and you be drinking water, eh? and you can eat two times. You can even eat eight times, but eh, you may be digging your grave too. And then exercise. That's another thing. So you talk about diet, there is diet, there is mindset. There is mindset. And then there is what? Exercise. Some of you have not sweated in the last, I don't even know when, how long. Then when they say evangelism, do you know evangelism is both physical and spiritual exercise? Do you know? Because evangelism, you are working. Huh? Most times, under the sun is that. And then you are talking to them, you are engaging your brain, you are sweating. Eh? It's good. Though. And then you, also, you are challenging yourself spiritually. Very good. Very good stuff. Sometimes take a walk, take a walk in a good place, walk. Sometimes run or buy some of these things. If they are too expensive, buy skipping rope of 2,000 naira and skip and sweat. Let your heart do it. Don't say, to do you give you. It's like I want to die. You will not die. Stretch a little. Don't be a woman and, and, and your tummy is 65 inches already. No, like a woman that is about to give birth. And they say, Mommy, sorry, are you pregnant? I've met you before and I was almost asking her. Is she pregnant? I said, no, she's not pregnant. That's just our own gift. Yeah. If it is a health challenge, you know, maybe five years or something, that's different. But there's nothing wrong with you, and your stomach is like that. It's a challenge. A young married man can have pot belly. His wife will cooking good food, but not a young sister. Are you following me here? I'm speaking for the young man. Amen? Amen. But the Lord, if you understand. <laughs> I have proper attitude towards doctors and hospitals. That will be the final one I'll give you concerning health. To what attitude towards doctors and hospitals? Some Christians hate doctors. Once they hear doctor, they feel doctor is a, is a devil. And they want their children to be doctors. When they say, can you go to the... If, if somebody is sick now, and I say, uh, can you go to the doctor? They say, pastor, you are a man of faith. Eh? You are a man of faith. Supernatural. Where is your anointing? And should now go to the doctor. They are not paying offering at tithe to remember. They are not blessing pastor, blessing anybody in the church. But now they want to use anointing to not go to the hospital so that they can waste the money on personal things. Do you see wickedness? Go to hospital. Go and do check up. It's not bad. 
I just want to know my pulse. Huh? I want to, yes, you see that you are doing BP. Huh? Are you fine? This one that you are doing BP. Huh? Maybe you are nearing your grave. No. He said, no, 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 I don't go to the hospital. I don't go to the hospital just like that. I don't. Me and my God, there's a covenant we have. I don't go to, I don't just go. He is changing it. Go. Some people have died young because they fail to just visit a doctor. I hope you know people die from malaria. Malaria, you just say, <laughs> malaria. <laughs> they say, you just, why is it I won't use it again. And then you let the doctor say, am I not okay now? Am I not okay now? Hmm. When it comes back, may they not have one of your neck. <laughs> the Lord will understand. Number five, what area should you discipline yourself as you prepare to pray? Are, are you blessed already? Number one is what? Your spiritual growth. Number two, time. Abby. Number three, money. Number four, health. Number five, your words. Your words. For your health, you can put touch on two. All right? I wish I would all things that you prosper and be in health. You can so prosper. So let's talk about your words. Um, Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Some of us young people don't know how to talk. Okay, let me ask you. Have you met somebody that does not know how to talk before? Eh? And you're like, some of you even look at your friend and say, look at this. <laughs> Sometimes it follows people to old age, such that when you are even elder, you don't know how to tell them, ah, sir. You don't know. There are some taxi drivers in Akure that don't know how to talk. There's a way they talk to passengers, and you're almost coming down. I like you. There are some young girls, they don't know how to talk, they don't know how to greet, they don't know how to relate with anybody. Some will tell you, can you, can you not find out? Can you? Uh, 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 a, a woman. Irritable talks. And even when they are talking, there's no sense. Like they can talk from now, and if they print all their words in one day, even if though it will make a textbook, that textbook, they cannot use it anywhere and fulfill destiny. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. Psalm 34. Child of God, if you know how to talk, it can open doors for you. Psalm 34 and verse 12. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Don't speak evil and don't tell lies. Very, very powerful instruction. Say the right things. The Bible says how forcible are right words. It says a word fitly spoken is like a gold in a set. There's a way people talk and it, do you know, there is a way you can go outside and say something now and they'll beat you. Now. Do you know it's possible? You can go to that place now that I didn't party and just stand on the table and say, if they go your mother's way, You've not finished your statement, you are like, just outside the never say, I left night. <laughs> James. James chapter 3, verse 4 to 11. James chapter 3 talks about controlling the tongue. James chapter 3. But let me read from verse 4 to 11. If I let me just read from verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be drunk more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the wings are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing. Somebody say small thing. The tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. Hmm. Let's just stop it there. Be careful how you use words. Discipline yourself. Listen, before you talk, think about what you want to say. Ask yourself, does it, does it edify? Does it encourage? Does it enlighten? Does it challenge people positively? Some people, the reason why they don't have this nearby is again is because of WhatsApp. They went on WhatsApp and typed rubbish. 
This one, this school said, this school thing said, this school no green goes there. Men will not go. Why would they have been able to send us to school? They are just wasting their money, said. Then now this school fees for next session. Now say, who will go use? <laughs> Satan is very wicked. We make sure they remember the bad thing you said. Why not use your words to open doors for yourself? See the right things. Let me put, listen, let people want to know what you are about to say. Do you know that some people, once they come, you don't want to hear anything. I said, I'm saying before. Look, I don't. You already know it's rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. As they are coming like this, you already laugh, you already know it's rubbish. That's it. And the lesson that's it. And then they say, rubbish. No sense. <laughs> and there are some people, when they are around, you're just quiet. You just, you just want to hear it. You just want to hear it. As they're moving their lips, they're just happy. They're just looking at us. I just like what they are saying. Just like it. May you not marry your husband that is foolish. Like Abigail, may you not marry neighbor. May you not marry a foolish man. He didn't say amen. May you not marry a foolish man. May you not marry a foolish woman. A woman that can talk from now to tomorrow, but you are crying on your inside as she's talking. Because everything she's saying, don't stupid. How did I marry this was a lie? You know you do. <laughs> Number six. This will bless you. This is number six now. Number six, personal and career development. Personal and career development. We're making progress. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. The Bible makes it clear that if the axe head be blunt, huh, you need to wet the edge and sharpen it. So that when you cut, you cut well. How do you develop yourself personally? Read books. Listen to tapes. Attend conferences. Attend seminars that is in the take workshops, do trainings that is in the direction of your noble goals. Not something that is not, it's not your goal, it's not, you don't have plans, no, in, your, in the direction of your goals. Oh, there's a business and career summit, and you think the speakers and the things they are trying to talk about, you need it. Go there. And they say it's 5K, you say 5K. 5K, I will not end. Since you will not go to YouTube and download all our playlists on finance and business and things like that, people go and pay 5k and then they will give you one handout that they just downloaded from Google and give you coke. And then you come back and say, ah, I snap picture. I went for career, but nothing is career in your career. Sometimes we should realize what we have. Just go to our playlist on YouTube and go to playlist and go to the, the, the one on finance and money and see all the things you have said about money and sit down and listen to it. Take courses online and learn. Don't be ignorant in this day. There are people that are not living in their houses huh? and they make millions every day or thousands and hundreds of thousands every day. And there are people walking on about the market and they are not making up to 2,000 naira every day. What is the difference? Sense. There's something that one exposure is powerful. It can be a weapon against you and it can be a tool for you. It depends on the content of the exposure that you receive. Are we getting blessed? So books, videos, seminars, trainings, mentorship, conferences, observation, watching for feedback, applying the right principles, all these things are tools for personal development and career development. Now, let's make progress. Now, next already, as we prepare to pray, next already, how to thrive. How to thrive as a single. Number one, this will be very easy. Number one, develop and follow the right priorities for your life. You don't have to be everywhere to become what God wants for you. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. Can I pray for the child of God in ECC? May you be in the right place at the right time. In the name of Jesus, develop and follow the right priorities. How do you know the right priorities? It will honor God and it will help you achieve your goals. That's why you need the right priority. It will honor God and it will help you achieve your goals. That's the right thing to do. Number two, make discipline your lifestyle, not a one time event. Make discipline your lifestyle. That means develop some systems and routines that are crucial to your long term goals and success. What are the things I can do every day that gets me closer to where I want to go? Then be doing it. I read every day. I study every day in certain areas that really matter to me in these days. 
and I did everything. In the last 10 days, I've read six books. In the last 10 days, six books in 10 days. Six, not 10 pages, six books. Yes, like reading it. Page by page, not skimming. Page by page. 10 days, six books. Sometimes I do more than that. Sometimes I do less than that. Depending on what I'm working on. Sometimes to write one of my books, I have, I must have read sometimes. There's a book I have, Mechanics of Preaching, and then um, maybe The Knowledge of God. Some of my books, I do research, apart from my personal understandings from scripture, I study, sometimes I can read 50 books to write one book. Meaning when you read one of my books, you actually read 50 books plus my own. Are you here? So if I'm, are you saying why? Are you saying why I should multiply my price by 50? Instead of seeing, slashing this one, as, as a part of it, there's no star discount, there's no star, there's no star. So number one, we said develop and follow the right priorities. Number two, make discipline your lifestyle. Number three, aim to be better and productive daily. Aim to be better and productive daily. We are going to five. Aim to be better and productive daily, no matter how small. Let me be better daily, just a little increment daily. The Chinese call it Kaizen. K-A-I-Z-E-N. The law of continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. Take it like this. When you go in your houses, you have taps. And if any of your tap is leaking or you open it, a little drops begin to fall into a bucket. If you go for a conference and spend three days, when you come back, that bucket may likely be full. Is that true? Now, if you stay with it, it will be boring. But little in incremental progress daily. It doesn't have to be massive daily. But if it is consistent in 365 days, see the compound results, all right? Compound effect of the right things that you're doing. Number four, identify, identify, and challenge your excuses. You know, Brian Tracy wrote a book, he said, no excuses. What are your excuses? I don't have time, that's not an excuse. I don't have money, that's not an excuse. Hey, I don't have somebody to help me. That's my excuse. No. Listen, in this life, be so responsible that you don't believe you have an excuse. As I am, anything I want to do. If I'm not doing it, I don't have an excuse for not doing it. I'm, do I'm just not doing it. Be responsible. I, I can't get these things done. Somebody asked me, ah, Pastor, when people chat you on WhatsApp, you respond to them. When people call you, you respond to them. Ah, you seem to be very available. And yet you are listening. But how, how exactly is it? I don't know. Is there another special time? Uh, it's true that I value people, but there are systems, there are things I do. As I am, I do not waste my time. I don't waste my time. And I do not allow people to waste my time. If, if you're talking me on WhatsApp and you're saying rubbish, you say rubbish, I will not decide. I will read it. Then I can only tell you I'm busy. Or I can just read it and give you a lap by not answering you. By not answering you. You know that I've read it and I'm not answering. Because you cannot ask me, how are you, sir? After 20 minutes, I said, I'm fine. And as your family, another 30 minutes, we are good. And I, have you eaten today? Will you feed me? And how is your head now? You was I sick? And how is, how is your area? I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a red boy. I'm not a red boy. And how is, uh, how is our baby, Shalom? It's not me and you did not. It's me, my wife has baby. It's not, it's not our baby. It's our own baby. I see your baby. It's not our baby. <laughs> what size is that baby? Sharon. What is this Sharon? You can't tell me Sharon. What is this? I say, no, Sharon. I say, I don't know about the child. But your baby is Sharon. I say, my baby is not Sharon. I know my baby name. You see, you cannot make progress and excuses at the same time. You have to choose one. You are either making impact or you are making excuses. You are either making money or you are making excuses. Some of you are selling things. The corner where your shop is is why they are not prospering. Take it outside. Despise the shame like Jesus. Put clothes on the ground. Put the things you want to sell here. Or carry a vessel. Put these people that sell clothes behind their cars. They will go to front of schools, strategic places. You are selling ice cream. You are keeping it in your room and you are playing. You come to inside your room. Inside your when you are not when you are not selling uh, music, uh, okay. carry your ice cream on the road and walk. If people that sell ice cream walk about, you what are you selling that you cannot market? Ice cream that people like. Have you ever seen enemy of ice cream before? And people are still 
You know Coca-Cola steam market, Coca-Cola, the steam market. You nobody knows what you are saying. You are not market. Identify and challenge your excuses. The, the last one, number five. Stay focused on the results. Even as you focus on the process. You pay attention to the process, but your eyes must be fixed on the goal. So that when things want to discourage you, you say, I will not be discouraged. Nothing will discourage me. Focus on the results. That's how I live my life. Focus on the results. Focus on the results. What are you trying to achieve? Some of you the university, you're reading. And then it's as if you want to faint. Then you say, eh, that means I want to die. I'm, uh, nobody do this work again. Till next week. Oh, oh Alex, Alex. But when your results come out, that that is you rest to rest there. It was not necessary. You know what you do? Rest a little, then challenge yourself. It's like I can understand this thing. See, your business can grow and it will grow. But not like this. You must do better. If you do not do better, nothing will get better. Rise to your feet. Are you blessed? Uh, rise to your feet. Are you blessed? I know you don't want it to finish. I understand. But rise to your feet. Let me beg you. Please rise to your feet. I want us to pray two prayer points and that will be good for tonight. First prayer point, say Heavenly Father, child of God. There are people online following and I know that those ones are praying. I don't want them to pray stronger than you tonight. You pray. Say Heavenly Father, I receive grace and wisdom to appreciate discipline. Go ahead and pray and talk to the Lord. Receive grace and wisdom to appreciate discipline and the results that it will yield in your life. This month, next month, in days to come, in months to come, in years to come. In the name of Jesus, we receive grace and wisdom to appreciate discipline. Go ahead and pray and say, let the spirit of diligence rest upon me. In the name of Jesus, is somebody praying diligently? Let the spirit of diligence rest upon me. Let the spirit of diligence rest upon me. In the name of Jesus. Can you rebuke the spirit of procrastination? And say, in the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of procrastination. I will do the right thing at the right time. In the name of Jesus, can you rebuke the spirit of laziness, somebody? In the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of laziness. We declare that we are diligent children of God. We are doing the right thing at the right time. We are putting in the effort and putting in the work. We are going the extra mile for extra results. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you receive grace as you go as you go this way? That you will thrive as a single. You will thrive as a single. You will prosper in the will of God. You will thrive even as a married person. You will experience multiplication of results productivity in all that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive grace to be productive, to be productive in all that I do. Whatever you lay hands upon, as it aligns with the will of God for you in this season, are you praying? It will prosper. It will prosper. Can you pray as I receive grace to give myself to knowledge? I discipline myself to give myself to knowledge. To the right resources, to the right materials in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, let me pray for you. Lift your hands now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be stronger like somebody that wants to receive something from God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your people following online and even right here tonight. Cause your face to shine upon them. As they apply these principles, oh God, help them to be more productive. And cause your people to prosper in all ramifications. And let your name be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen.